be with you. Let me uh, make a suggestion. Each Sunday as we gather together, we gather together to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord, His body and His blood. And it would be um, appropriate on our part to, uh, in the five minutes after the bell is rung, uh, it would be appropriate for us to uh, take the opportunity to prepare ourselves as the scripture calls us to do. And so I would suggest if you would like to do that, not only to make use of the prayers that are in the front of the hymnal, but also on page 329 in the hymnal, there is um, the Christian questions and their answers. Many of you, no doubt, went through those questions and answers uh, during your time of catechesis uh, when you were with the pastor in your catechism. And uh, it's a wonderful way to, to uh, get our minds focused and to prepare ourselves to receive the body and blood of Jesus in the supper. Page 329, Christian questions with their answers. Okay, uh, let's first of all take, consider the announcements for today. Um, the first thing that we look at is the, those listed in the prayer of the church. Are there others that we should be praying for? Do you have uh, prayer requests today? I don't see any hands. So uh, please keep these in your prayers that are listed. I also want to, those of you who came to the presentation on Madagascar, um, I mentioned and we've been praying for a pastor uh, in Madagascar, Pastor Raka Duva'u Joseph, who's listed in, in, the, in the listing in the prayer of the church. And just wanted to let you know that uh, he is, he's suffering from cancer and um, he's go undergoing chemo treatment as best as they can do in Madagascar. And I talked with um, one of my friends in Madagascar this morning by way of the internet and, and they say that he's, at, to this point, he's doing quite well and he's very grateful for the prayers uh, that that uh, we're making for him here at Trinity. So that brings you up to date with respect to Pastor Joseph. We have the joy this morning of giving uh, God's grace and bringing into the family of God, uh, into the Holy Church, Henry, Steve, and Meyer. And we'll do that right away after the singing of the first hymn uh, through the washing of holy baptism. I also want to point out that the last, serve, uh, the, uh, last Sunday of this month we'll have um, a voters meeting. And so I encourage you to plan on staying for that. It'll be right after the service. Uh, parents of children should know that there's not Sunday, there will not be Sunday school that day. Uh, but do, do plan on staying. This is, this is your congregation. And you need to have a voice in this congregation. So please plan on staying and uh, participating in that voters meeting after the service, the last Sunday of the month. Uh, this week, there's several things I want to point out. Uh, today, we'll have an elders meeting. Those of you who are elders, be mindful of that. At 11.15, the, the uh, Bible class will end then at 11.15 today, and the elders will meet immediately at 11.15. This uh, coming week, um, I want to mention that I won't have my Bible study at 6.30. Pastor Boothby will have his Bible study at 7.30 if you'd like to come to that. Uh, but I will not have a Bible study. While people are here doing float work, I'll be floating with the youth uh, somewhere on a river um, as, uh, that, during that day. So uh, that's why I won't be here for, uh, for the Bible study. But Wednesday night, too, those of you who are on the Parish Planning Council plan on being here at 7.30 uh, for the meeting, the regularly scheduled meeting. I think that's all I'm going to mention in the way of announcements. Uh, one more thing, uh, there's an op still opportunity for you to give to support the work of Lutherans in Africa. Pastor May was here a couple of Sundays ago, uh, did a wonderful presentation on his work, his very important work in Africa. There's still opportunity for you to help with that, Sunday by Sunday in these Sundays in July. Uh, so if you would do that, uh, God bless you as you do. Um, there's information, there's a, there's a long announcement here that kind of details what that's all about, so please uh, read through that. We are at the fourth Sunday after Trinity, and uh, we'll begin this morning by singing a baptismal hymn to lead us into the holy baptism of Henry Stephen Meyer. Let's sing hymn 593, See This Wonder in the Making. Oh, yeah. 
child is taking as a lamb saves in his keeping is to be awake or sleeping miracle each time it happens as the door to heaven opens and the father means beloved heir of gifts a king would cover far more tender than a mother far more caring than a father God in If you would uh, keep in hand your hymnal and turn to page 268, 268, you'll find the rite that we use for holy baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. dearly beloved Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to atone for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So I would ask, how are you named? Thank you. Henry Stephen, receive the sign of the Holy Cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ, the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood, yet according to your great mercy, you preserved the believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Henry Stephen according to your boundless mercy and bless him with the true faith by the Holy Spirit and through this saving flood all sin in him which has been inherited from Adam and which he himself has committed since would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens, in the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. 
They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Henry Stephen as sponsor in this Christian faith? God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. God. We pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen. I would ask the congregation, all of us, to join together, all of us who have been baptized into Christ and to claim this faith of Christ, to answer the questions, along with Henry Stephen, who cannot voice them at this time because of his age, but together we uh, confess our faith. Henry Stephen, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, yes I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, yes I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, I believe. Henry Stephen, do you desire to be baptized? Yes, I do. Henry Stephen Meyer. Henry Stephen Meyer, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you, in Jesus' name, as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Please rise. Let us pray. 
Almighty and most gracious God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Henry Stephen the new birth and holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Please be seated. We'll continue with the next hymn, the entrance hymn, The Gifts Christ Freely Gives.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, grant that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governance that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading appointed for this Sunday is taken from the 50th chapter of Genesis. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph, saying, Your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, Please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin, because they did evil to you. And now, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear, I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Atone for our sins for your name's sake. Why should the nations say, Where is their God? Epistle reading from the twelfth chapter of Romans. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Alleluia. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. He also told them a parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone when he is fully trained will be like his teacher. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye? But do not notice the log that is in your own eye. How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take out the speck that is in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye? You hypocrite! First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck that is in your brother's eye. This is the Gospel of the Lord. 
Someone came up to you and asked, what is it to be a Christian? What does a Christian look like? What would you say? 
Well, you can begin with what we saw this morning. This is what a Christian looks like. A Christian is one who is baptized. A Christian is one who has made a disciple, as Jesus declares it happening, by being baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and being taught everything that our Lord has commanded us, hearing God's Word. So this, too, looks like what a Christian lives like, hearing God's Word, being where Jesus is for us to feed us that Word into our ears. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, preached, read. What does it look like to be a Christian? It's those who come and kneel here in this place, to come and receive from our God what he came to give, the gifts Christ freely gives, as we sang. And what he gives to us flows from the cross, where he accomplished our salvation, where he took the sin of the world into his own flesh and gave us that righteousness, that forgiveness, that grace, that mercy that we desperately need. And it's fed to us again into our mouths with his body and his blood given and shed from the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. So we learn, first of all, to answer the question, what does it mean to be a Christian, with the word receiving. We receive from God his salvation. We receive from God the gifts he freely gives. We receive life from the God who gives life. And that forever. And that because of Christ. It's all grounded, centered, focused upon our Savior who came into our flesh, Jesus, our Lord. But it doesn't stop there. It's not just a matter of receiving. It's a matter of giving. It's a matter of living our life as Christians, going out these doors today, giving giving what we have received, giving the forgiveness, the love, the mercy of God to the whole world, opening our mouths with the words that we have been taught, opening our mouths to proclaim the salvation that is ours in Christ, and using our hands and our feet and our heart to reach out to people with the love with which we have been loved. Jesus summarizes it for us in a simple sentence. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. We receive mercy, and we give mercy. We receive his love, and we give his love. What gets in the way is our flesh, and the sin that is always a part of our flesh. It's not our nature to be like that. And that's why we need to always come and receive, first of all, so that we can give. I always like to use the illustration, which all of us know because we pray it every day, use the illustration from the Lord's Prayer, the fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses, we're praying to our God, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. There's no period there, there's no comma there. It's a flow from God through, uh, to us and through us. Forgive us so that we can forgive. It's not natural to us. What's natural to us is to get even. What's natural to us is to double up our fist and find the vengeance and the revenge against those who have hurt us, those who have persecuted us, those who hate us. But you see, that's not the life of the child of God, is it? In the epistle reading we heard today, these words, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves. But leave it to the wrath of God. God will take care of it. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. 
And then this kind of strange saying, for so, by so doing you will heat burning coals on his head. And what's being said there is to love someone who hates you, to do good to them, to feed them, to give them something to drink is completely incomprehensible according to our human nature. They won't be able to understand it. It'll be like burning coals on their head. But you see, what that will lead to, God willing, is repentance. For the evil that they have done, for the evil that they have brought, that they would turn from their wicked ways and live, even as we live that way. We turn from our wicked ways and live. We come in repentance as sinners. We have not loved our neighbors as, our, as ourselves. That's what we confess. In fact, we've done the opposite. Our flesh, our sinful flesh, has led us all too often to seek vengeance, to double up our fist and find an opportunity to strike, either with those fists or with horrible words. Repent. This is not the life of the child of God. Our Lord would open our ears and our hearts and our minds to receive his forgiveness so that we become different. Sin will never go away. These thoughts, these ways, these actions will always creep back into our minds and into our hearts, but we must fight them. And the only way to fight them is to continue to receive forgiveness, to receive mercy so that we can give mercy. Jesus summarizes it well, perfectly. Be merciful. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. You see, what Jesus is really saying is, we are enemies of God. That's what sin does to us. It puts us in a position that God should hate us, God should destroy us, but he doesn't. He calls us back constantly into his presence to forgive us, to give us new life, to resurrect us, even in our flesh, so that we can be new creatures in Christ. That miracle happened today with Henry Stephen who was born in his nature as an enemy of God, and now God has brought him into his presence as his friend, as his child. He has redeemed him, bought him back from sin, death, and hell, and given him life. And the same thing he has done for you today and continues to do in word and in sacrament. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. You know, Jesus even explains it for us so that we know what that means. He continues on and he says, Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will be, not be condemned. What Jesus is saying here is not. He's not saying that we can't take a look at what's right and what's wrong and make those determinations. We must do that. Otherwise, there's no need for repentance. Otherwise, there's no need for God who would forgive sinners. What he's saying to us is, don't put yourself in the place of God. Who are you to condemn someone to hell? And furthermore, who are you to save someone? That's God's task. That's Jesus' task, which is why we're continually returning to him to receive his forgiveness. Don't put yourself in the place of God. When you see your neighbor who is sinning, realize that there's a great big log of sin in your own eye. And return to the Lord your God so that he can remove it. And as he removes that log from your own eye, there's still a speck, but your neighbor may have a speck too. So go to him and say to him, I love you. Our only hope is Jesus. Our only hope is to return to the one who can take away all sin from us. Judge not. Condemn not. Don't put yourself in the place of God. That's what Joseph's brothers were afraid of. You know, they had done great wrong to Joseph. They had sold him to, uh, basically into slavery. Uh, they were going to kill him. But Joseph rose to great prominence when he was in Egypt. And when the, when the brothers came to him for help, when, when they came to him to be fed by him literally, they were afraid that Joseph would recognize them and have them put to death. But Joseph says, no, do not fear. For am I in the place of God? No. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. You see, that's the case, isn't it? God means everything that we do in the way of loving, showing mercy, especially to our enemies, especially to those who have wronged us and hated us and persecuted us. That God intends it for good, that is, for their salvation, that they too would receive 
the mercy and love of God and so live. Judge not, condemn not. And then Jesus says, forgive and you will be forgiven. One of the most distressing things as a child of God and as a pastor, one of the most distressing things in a congregation of those who are named by Christ in holy baptism is that we find occasions to not forgive each other. I mean, isn't it much more fun to hold a grudge? Don't you enjoy, don't you enjoy the opportunities when people that you, that you despise, that have wronged you, come into your presence and you can turn your back on them and not talk to them? Isn't that fun? Doesn't that do your heart good? We hate it, don't we? And yet we love it. Because it gives us the opportunity to double our fist. We are going to get even with them. They've done us wrong. That is not the life of the child of God. Jesus says, forgive, and you will be forgiven. Jesus also says elsewhere in the gospel, if you refuse to forgive, you will not be forgiven. And where does that forgiveness start? It's not natural to us. It starts with the God who forgives us. We are his enemies by our sin, and he forgives us. And so he leads us out to forgive. Where does it begin? It begins with our nearest neighbors. It begins with a husband and a wife. It begins with parents and children and children and parents. And it leads us out into the places where we work and the community where we live. How in the world, how in the world can anyone else want to be a Christian if we hate each other? How in the world can anyone else want to come into this place if we're constantly holding grudges and turning our back on each other? <coughs> Repent. Return to the Lord your God so that he can forgive you and you can give forgiveness. And finally, our Jesus summarizes mercy with one beautiful word, give. Our human nature is all about keep. Keep. It's doubled up fist. I worked hard for everything I have. It's mine. And you're not getting it. You can come and ask. You can come and beg. Don't care. Find your own way. I don't care about you. It's mine. We double up our fist. We double up our fist to get even. We double up our fist to keep what's ours. The truth of the matter is nothing is ours. It's all a gift. Everything that we have, the breath in our body. You didn't, you didn't manufacture that breath today, did you? It's a gift from God. The, the blood you have coursing through your veins, did you put that there? It's a gift from God. The strength that you have in your muscles, gift from God. Everything that we have is a gift from God. Thanks be to God. He gives us these gifts, freely gives us these gifts to do what? To hoard them like a bunch of greedy mongers? gives us these gifts so that we can give. With respect to our neighbor, it is better to give than to receive, the scripture says. To be sure, we must receive from God first so that we can give. But with respect to our neighbor, we should give. What a wonderful opportunity we have still in our presence to, to give to Lutherans in Africa, to those who need to hear this wonderful gospel, this merciful gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to be brought into that salvation. We don't have to give that far away, do we? There's plenty of opportunities for us to give love to our neighbors, mercy to our neighbors, to those who are in need, to open up our hands. This illustration I've used before already in sermons, but I'll use it over and over again. The Christian life is a life of open hands, of receiving from our God with the open hands that he gives to us and using those open hands to give. The Christian life is receiving and giving. And Jesus tells us as much, give. We can give. We can give because as Jesus describes, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over is put into our lap. Look at how he's blessed us. All of us have the opportunity to give. All of us can give more. But our sinful nature says, hang on, because that's your security. 
That's your hope. That's your peace. You have no future unless you hold on to it, unless you put it in your pockets. But Jesus promises us a future. He promises us life. And we must believe him. He who has given so freely will always give. It may not be everything we want, but it will certainly be everything we need. And our chief need is Jesus himself. It's his forgiveness because we have no life without that Jesus. Thanks be to God that little Henry Stephen was given that life this morning to live in. What does it look like to be a child of God? To receive and to give. And Jesus summarizes it for us, doesn't he? Be merciful. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful to you. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ, your Savior. Amen. We rise to sing and pray that our Lord would create in us clean hearts and renew a right spirit within us. Thank you.
We rise to pray. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Merciful Father, you gave your Son, our Savior Jesus, that we might share in his divine life, that we might call ourselves and live as Christians. Help your baptized people to live in mercy and forgiveness toward all, especially our enemies. Strengthen all pastors, teachers, and servants of your church in this proclamation of your alone saving gospel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ruler of the nations, you hold in your hand all the might of man. Look in kindness and mercy on our nation. Grant all of our public servants the wisdom, the courage, and the integrity that is needed and is according to your will to keep under your protection all of us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Stronghold for those who are oppressed. Remember all those who go through difficult times in their lives, the unemployed and underemployed, those with troubled marriages and difficult family life, those who suffer addictions of so many kinds, those who have been deeply hurt. Bring to each one of their aching hearts the comfort and the mercy that you alone can give, and that peace that comes through Jesus, Lord, in your mercy. God of our salvation, for the glory of your holy and saving name, deliver your servants who cry out to you for your healing touch. We're mindful of Lucille, Irwin, Darlene, Cecil, Richard, Fred, Delbert, Jay, Marcel, Hilmer, David, pastors Joseph, Kellogg and Mueller, give to them, O Lord, your mercy in healing according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Bountiful King of heaven, as we gather now at the feast of your Son, who has prepared us to celebrate his victory over sin and death, grant us truly repentant hearts and faith that we may receive his body and his blood for the forgiveness of our sins, for the strengthening of our faith, and for a share of his divine life as we live it day by day, Lord, in your mercy. Join our prayers and praises with those of your servants of every time and place, and unite them in the ceaseless petitions of our great High Priest, until he returns in power and great glory as the victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. And his mercy Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Love is patient 
and forbearing, clothed in Christ's humility. Gentle, selfless, kind, and caring, reaching out in charity. Love in Christ abides forever, fainting not when hills attend. Love forgiving and forgiven shall endure until my